Welcome to a potentially brand new series where we take a deeper dive into Japanese exclusive games. Sure, many Japanese games come with English on a cartridge or in their download, and we talk about them often enough. In fact, you can't shut me up about them. But plenty more do not get English, and they stay in Japan forever. But this series, we plan to shed some light on the weird, wonderful, unique, and maybe sometimes crap Japanese exclusive games that only have Japanese. Are we missing out? Are they worth an import? How easy are they to play without Japanese language skills? That's what we're here to find out. We're here to clear things up and potentially find some gems for you to import into your collection, whether you know Japanese or not. This is Left in Japan. That's probably copyrighted, right? Better think of some more quickly just to, you know, edit out in case. Um, welcome to Japan only. Welcome to Lost in... No. Welcome to the Language Barrier. Gaming in Japan. Japanese gem. I don't know. I'm sure one of them will stick. You choose one. Which one do you like? Now we are aware that this might be a slightly unusual video, incredibly niche in some instances, so those who do enjoy it, you really need to say so and give your support. Drop a comment below as to which Japanese exclusive games you would like us to take a look at for you to see if they're worth an import or not. And also, before we get into it properly, Big thanks to Miguel Marin for writing the majority of this review. It was his idea. For this episode, we're starting with something that's a little bit of an oddity, a little bit unique, and shall we say, maybe a little bit risque. This is Lover Kiss. Love are a kiss. One of them. It's a dating sim cross photography game. This originally released on the PS4 and our dear Nintendo Switch back in 2020, Year of the Apocalypse. Now I know what you're thinking, dating sims are 10 a penny on the Switch. Is it really that unique? Well, firstly I'd say you're wrong. Most visual novels out there claim to be dating sims but aren't really, they're just romance novels. You choose some dialogue options and the narrative takes you on its course. Proper dating sims tend to have stats to raise, time management, RPG like mechanics with usable resources such as money. In the case of Love R, Kiss is actually fairly simple. Even you, yes you, and yes a moron like myself can potentially play Love R Kiss. It's pretty simple. But before we start talking about the game's systems, let's introduce the story. After starting the game and inputting your name, you find yourself in front of your school at night shouldering a camera gifted to you by your father, who gave you the task of capturing the youthfulness of your day-to-day -day school life. You then decide to enter the building only to find the school's top student and granddaughter of the headmaster doing her rhythmic gymnastic routine. With such a beautiful sight in front of you, you do the only sensible thing and leave the room before she notices. Of course not, this is Japan. You ready up your recently acquired camera and take a bunch of pictures without her consent. Awkward. Unfortunately for you, she finds out almost immediately, but thanks to the power of anime narrative magic, she forgives you and even becomes your friend. On your next day of school, you then meet the rest of the cast and of course start taking pictures of each of them because why not? Those commendable endeavours do not go unnoticed, as the sole member of the photography club asks you to join it so that it might once again regain its former glory. Thus begins your noble and artistic quest of photographing the blooming youth of these lovely ladies and their undergarments. Okay, maybe that is exaggerated a little bit. The game itself is a lot more modest regarding its kinky aspects when comparing it to the likes of Omega Labyrinth Life or the Senran Kagura games. But it's up there, and since we're on the topic, I think I should point out that the PS4 version is actually slightly censored when compared to the Switch version. Some of the changes include less bouncy boobies, underwear being less detailed, and probably the biggest offender, the underwear the girls wear not changing depending on which day of the week you're in. Filthy. Or does that make it more sexy? There's an internal conflict going on right now. Mm. While the story itself is entertaining enough, I wouldn't call this a plot-heavy game. You shouldn't go in expecting some crazy plot twist because there isn't one. As a dating sim, the main focus is your relationship with the girls. There's something surprisingly rewarding about noticing how their attitudes towards you slowly change the more you interact with them. 
Admittedly, you are going to need some Japanese knowledge if you want to understand all of that. We'll go into more detail about that soon, but if you only care about the photography aspect, as long as you understand how the mechanics work, I would say it's fairly easy to jump right into it. So let's not waste any more time with the story and explain how the mechanics actually work. So the goal of the game is to reach max affection level with a girl, and you have a time limit of two months to do so. Although to be honest, the time limit might as well not be there considering how generous that time frame is. Each day consists of four time slots, two in the morning and two in the afternoon. During these, you get to choose with whom you wish to spend your time with. Each girl has their own time schedule, one that you can always check. This means that they will attend to certain classes, which will change the outfit that they're wearing. Once you have selected a girl you wish to interact with, you will be shown a screen with all the school locations and a percentage on all of them. That number represents how likely it is that you will meet that girl, with 100% being a guaranteed encounter and 5% being a guaranteed encounter for gacha players. That's a joke for all you gacha players out there. Some might say we've uh, gotcha back. You can increase those odds by pressing X and using magical power points. If you use three or more, you will even get some extra bonuses. These points regenerate each night, so you don't need to be too frugal with them. Once that's done, you will be thrown into a dialogue event. Look, I know talking to girls is scary, but fear not, this game makes it rather easy. How it works is that on the bottom of the screen, a bunch of colored jewels will be lined up. Those colors being green, red, and blue. They each represent different conversational topics or actions, such as talking about hobbies, food, or simply praising them. Each dialogue event has five rounds. Firstly, you choose one of those duels. After the round is over, a new duel will be added from your duel sack. Sounds disgusting. If two of the same are lined up next to each other, they will merge into a double one, and if there's more, into a triple one, and then eventually into a quadruple one, with the last one being a completely different colour that represents the more risque actions such as holding hands or touching her somewhere and seeing how she reacts. You can actually run out of jewels, but they do replenish each night. Plus, you can increase the number by going to a club room and levelling up, which will also replenish them. Keep in mind that if you spend too much time choosing a jewel, she will get impatient and the round will be skipped. During these events, you will see a bunch of bars filling up. Both the big pink one on the top of the screen with the heart, as well as the four small ones work similarly. Once they are filled up, you will unlock an event, with the heart bar unlocking story events and the rest being optional free events. These events are assigned to different time slots, so you will then have to choose whether you want to have a dialogue event or a unique event. Some of them will have photo opportunities. Be careful with story events because triggering two of them will progress girls' affection to the next level, resetting every event bar which might lock you out of some optional events. The last bar I haven't talked about is the blue one with the camera. You are probably already guessing what it does. Filling it up will let you select the camera icon which will bring you into the photographing session. Before you start, the girls will ask you which pose you want her to take, either standing up, sitting down, or laying down, as well as a spot within the place where you want her to be. Once that's done, you will be given full control, allowing you to freely walk around the place to search for that perfect angle. During this part, you have two gameplay modes, movement and photography. You can switch between them by pressing the L button once. While in photo mode, the game gives you full gyro controls, by which I mean not just a pointer functionality, but actual full rotation and movement. If you hold down Y, a menu will pop up letting you sweet talk the girl, telling her how cute or sexy they are. This will fill an excitement bar that after reaching a certain threshold, will let you ask the girl to take more daring poses. But be careful not to overdo it, as it may make the girl too embarrassed and will run away from you, just like real life. Woe is me. The environments will also have a couple of rubby ducky like figures for you to find and photograph, with some being devilishly hidden. After the photo shoot is over, you can take a look at the photos you've taken and even mark as favourites the ones you like the most. At first, I didn't know if this did anything, so I did what any reasonable bloke would do and favourited all the pictures where the girls' panties were visible. Little did I know that those pictures would later be selected and displayed for the school festival scene. This led to a scene where the protagonist and said girl were having a rather wholesome and emotional talk while surrounded by a mural filled with pictures of that girl's knickers. 
I think it's fair to say that this school festival truly became cultural. But that's not all, because after finishing any route, you will unlock a brand new mode which I can only describe as a Tamagotchi Waifu Simulator. Yes, I know you're all hovering over that buy button right now. Here you get to be all lovey-dovey with whichever girl you manage to woo during the story. Plus, you get to bring her to all new locations that weren't previously available to take even more photos of her. Doing so, as well as simply interacting with her, will complete missions that will grant you coins for you to spend on new outfits, accessories, and poses for photo shoots. It should all be evident by now, this game is sure not lacking in content. So I know that this may seem complicated, but that comes down to dating sims not being that common. To be completely honest, as far as dating sims go, this is probably one of the easier ones to get into. However, that doesn't matter much when the whole thing is in Japanese. But I'm sure plenty, or at least a couple of you, are asking yourselves whether you can play this with little Japanese knowledge. But before I answer that, I will ask you a couple of quiz questions to test your weeb level. Let's begin. Do you know what these words mean? And no, I ain't gonna try saying them. If you know these words, congratulations, you already know most of the words used in this game. Okay, so obviously you aren't going to understand what they're saying besides the occasional word you might have heard a thousand times in anime, but if you've been studying some Japanese, the conversations they have in this game are rather ordinary and not that hard to follow. The game does not have furigana, which might make things hard to read if you don't know the kanji, but even still, I feel like if you are around N3 or maybe N4 level, you might be able to understand a decent amount of what's going on. Of course, if you're interested in taking pictures and little else, and then just fumbling around a little, that will be fine enough to get your goal. Thankfully, a good chunk of the photography user interface is in English, and even then the parts that aren't usually have visual icons that might help you out a little bit. It might take a bit of time getting the hang of it, but eventually it shouldn't be a problem at all, even if you have no Japanese knowledge whatsoever. In fact, if you follow what we have mentioned during the mechanics portion of this game, just talking with the girls and triggering their story events, you will be able to finish any route and unlock the extra mode, even if you don't understand a thing. So how likely is it for this game to be translated? Unfortunately, I don't think the chances are that high, although I would love to be proved wrong. The main reason being that for whatever reason, dating sims barely, if ever, get translated. I find this baffling, considering that lately we're getting a fairly decent amount of visual novels localized, so with a bit of marketing, I don't think that this would flop too bad. Oh well. If you think you're up for the task of taking dodgy photos of schoolgirls, then this game is available physically in Japan and digitally on the Japanese eShop. If you want the physical version, import links are below in the description and the pinned comment with our discount code for 5% off it, SwitchWatchTV. If you use that code while checking out SwitchWatchTV, you can get 5% off any physical item from PlayAsia. Plus, we have put links below where you can also pick up some Japanese eShop credit. There's a big digital discount at the minute, so you won't need too much. Usually, the game is 8,000 yen, there or thereabouts, but now it is down to 2,600 for a week or so, which is actually not that expensive, relatively. If you use either of those links, then you also massively help support the Switch Watch team at the same time, and we thank you ever so much. Let's head into the closing thoughts. If you want my two cents, or shall we say Miguel's two cents, actually, I had a surprisingly enjoyable time with it. I went in thinking it was going to be some shallow experience that had little to offer besides some fan service a la Dead or Alive Extreme 3. But it turns out there was a lot of care put into this game. While the roots themselves don't have the same depth you would see on visual novels like Alcana or Clanad, they still managed to stand out thanks to the character and relationship development feeling genuine and heartfelt. If I were to compare to another game, I would say it feels really close to Amagami. If anyone knows what that game is, which makes sense since they are more or less related, but I would say that Love Our Kiss does lack some of the edge that made Amagami so special. Similarly, it also shares some of the shortcomings Amagami had, where if you try to clear all the routes, it might become a little bit repetitive. But still, there's no denying that Love Our Kiss is an overall really pleasant game to wind down to, be it focusing on the story, taking the pictures, or a mix of both. It does just enough to keep you entertained with a nice balance between very light drama and wholesome romance. 
It's a shame that the publisher Kadokawa Games hasn't shown any interest in localizing it because when compared to their actual localized games, as in Root Letter and Root Film, I believe Love Our Kiss stands on top. Nevertheless, just the fact that high production, or at least relatively high production dating sims like this still exist should be good news on its own. It shows that even though this is a niche genre within a niche genre, it's been kept alive even to this day. For those looking at potentially importing, it depends on your language skills and what you're looking to get out of it. It's easy enough to fumble through the menu system if you just want to take some panty shots and the story sections can be easily skipped. If you're wanting a nice dating sim to go with it, you're going to need a little bit more language skills to get full enjoyment. The lack of furigana might make it a hurdle to some, but considering how basic most conversations are, you still might be able to understand the overall outline. Besides, it's not like some grandiose and complex story, it's nothing more than a slice of school life, and albeit a pretty wholesome one. We're going to give three ratings for this series. Firstly, the game as a whole, regardless of language skills or whatever, and then two ratings on how import friendly it is. So firstly, the game as a whole, Miguel gives it a 7 out of 10. With import friendliness in mind, for those with moderate language skills, a 3 out of 5. And for those who are morons, like, I mean, uh, for those who do not have language skills, a 1.5 out of 5. Remember, that is a rating not for the game, just how friendly it is for importing. Alright, many thanks for watching Left in Japan, I mean Japanese Gems, I mean whatever it's going to be called, episode 1. What do you think? Would you like to see more? Please do let us know, especially which Switch games you would like us to take a look at. I know this is super niche, so any support you can lend would greatly increase the chances of it coming back on a semi-regular basis, maybe once a month or so. Thanks to Miguel Marin for writing 99.9% .9 of this video review. 0.1% was uh, a questionable joke or two written by me. Can you guess which ones they were? Many thanks to our executive producers. Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tata Ruga, Alexander Cato, Jcross7776, Elisa, Punky Dusta, Michael Del Polito, Cigar Trucker, Cartoon Soren, Jack Severus, Vilos, and Robotech. And you, thank you ever so much for your support. If you watched all the way through this mega long import video, then you help supporters ever so much. Give me a camera emoji in the comments so I can see all the properly cultured people who, you know, watched enough of this video. Check out some of our other stuff, lots of import stuff, lot of weird stuff. We've got you covered. We'll see you guys over there.